Okay, in this lesson, we are going to look at section 5.1. Uh, if you're in my class, you have a study guide, you are more than welcome to pause this video at any point in time and maybe copy down the notes in your study guide if that's helpful or whatever is useful for you. Um, we're in 5.1, which is called Exploring Data. We're going to look at some specific um, definitions and different mathematical concepts that are going to come up in, in this unit. Um, and these notes are, for the most part, done in advance. Um, so first of all, looking at some key ideas. Uh, Mean, median, and mode are all called measures of central tendency because they all measure the center of data in different ways. Uh, so we're going to define each one in the next uh, three bullets here. To determine the mean, another word for mean is average of a set of values. What you do is you add all the values and then divide by the number of the values. Uh, the median of a set of values orders the values from the least to the greatest. And the median is the middle value. So I'm listed from least to greatest. It's just the middle value. Uh, in some cases, there will be two middle values. So if there are two middle values, the median is the average of those two values. And finally, the mode is the value that occurs the most. And the way that I remember that is that it starts with MO, and so does most. So mode is most. Uh, there can be more than one mode. So the data that occurs the most is your mode. Uh, let's look at three really quick examples just to kind of explain or help define them a little bit more. These are examples. It says, uh, the individual measures of central tendency are useful in different situations. Which measure of central tendency, so it's asking mean, median, or mode, would be the most useful for analyzing data in each of the following situations and justify your answer? Um, so what would be the most useful for for analyzing shoe sizes to be stocked at a department store? You could defend a number of the central tendencies. My feeling is that mode is the best measure for analyzing this because you want the shoe size that sells the most. And that's what mode defines. Uh, number two, what would analyze the average number of Skittles per bag? Well, the word average is there, so that one kind of gives it away. Uh, the mean, because it is the average, would be the best for analyzing that. And finally, thirdly, what would best analyze the wages earned by an Apple employee. Uh, my thinking is, and we'll get into this later uh, in a future lesson, is that this would be the median. Uh, so the middle employee would best analyze this data or, or represent the data because the middle employee best represents the wages. Or in other words, uh, why not the mean, you might think. The mean would be too high because the CEO of Apple would raise the average too high. So for example, if you had um, 40 people making $60,000, and then the top dog, the CEO, makes $4 million, the average would be raised to probably around $200,000 or something like that, which doesn't really represent, uh, represent the wages earned by an Apple employee. The middle employee would represent that the best. Um, a few more definitions, and we'll get into the last example. The range of a set of values is the difference between the least and greatest value in the set. And the range is also called dispersion. So if I say range or dispersion, it means the same thing. Secondly, a line plot organizes values visually on a number line. And outliers are values that are widely separated from the rest of the data. So what we're going to look at now, and you might want to pause this if you want to take the notes, but what we're going to look at now is an example of one of my math classes. And we'll apply all these concepts. It says, Mr. Martin's Foundations 11 class wrote a quiz out of 15, and these are the scores. So I have, I think it's 14 scores here of how my class did out of 15. Something that's often useful is representing these scores on a line plot, because then you can actually get, because right now you don't really know, know if there's good scores, bad scores, what the range is, if there's uh, kind of a mean that looks kind of average. So what we do is we could represent this on a line plot. So on a line plot, you represent all the possible scores or all the possible data, and each of these data values will be represented on the line plot. So if I cross out 9 here, I'll put an X above 9, because one student got 9. If I cross out 10 here, that student got 10. There's two 11s, so I'd put, to represent two students, I'd put two Xs there. Uh, the student got 13, 8, 10, 12, and you'll see here, I'll just finish it off, 12, 8, 2. And it's always useful to cross it off as you go, so as not to double up on any statistics. Uh, 10. Oops, sorry. Don't know why my computer's waiting here. <clears throat> uh, 10, 1, and 2. There we go. Okay, so there's the my class. So I had one student get a 1, two students get 2s, then no students got between 3 and 7, and a whole bunch of students between 8 and 13. Uh, so I did some of the work in advance here. 
Part B says determine the median of the quiz scores. So what I did is I took all these and wrote them from least to greatest. And if I had a score that happened more than once, I had to write it down uh, <clears throat> multiple times. So one occurred once, two occurred twice, eight occurred twice. So one, two, two, eight, eight, nine, just order it from least to greatest. And if I want to find the middle, one way to do that is to just uh, realize that if I take one from the, I want to find the exact middle person, so it's somewhere in here. So if I take two off the front or three off the back, here I'm just going to cross them out as we go. I've crossed out at this moment uh, six on the front, five on the back. So here are your, unfortunately here there's two middles. So as it stated before, if there's two middles, you take the average of those middles. Well, the average of 10 and 10 is just 10. And most of you, you don't have to show the work, but your average or your median here uh, is going to be 10, not your average. Uh, in the next example, it says determine the mean of the quiz scores. So if I add up all those scores really quickly, uh, we'll get the mean. So 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 8 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. So you want to represent every person. So 10 three times. Uh, plus 11 plus 11 plus 12 plus 12 plus 13. That looks like 119 is my sum. So in order to get my mean, I would do 119. And in total, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 values. So 119 divided by 14. So divide that by 14. And I have an average of 8.5. So my mean score on that test was 8.5. Uh, next, determine the mode of the quiz scores. This is really easy. With a line plot, you can see the one that happens the most is the number 10. So my mode in this case uh, would be 10. If two of them occurred three times, then they would both be the mode. Uh, e says determine the range of the quiz scores. So I just take the highest score and subtract the lowest score. So my range is between 13 and 1. And 13 minus 1 is equivalent to 12. So there's my range. What are the outliers? Outliers are widely separated. So what I think about here is if you look at this line plot, who would be kind of the outcasts? And you can see there's a bunch here the outcasts would probably be 1 and 2. So outliers could be below, could be above. In some cases, if they're all grouped together, there would be no outliers. It's a little bit of a, um, yeah, you just have to kind of investigate it a little bit. The outliers here would be 1 and 2. And finally, the last part of your study guide says, which of the measures of central tendency is the most useful for analyzing the data? Justify your answer. So what we're looking for is the answer, mean, median, and mode. Which of these represents the data the best? Uh, well, if we look at the mean, median, and mode in this case, they're actually all pretty close. The mean is 8.5, the median is 10, and the mode is 10. So if we would like to represent, they're all pretty close. Uh, it says all of them give some useful information, and since all the measures of central tendency are close, you could make a case for all of them being useful. So I don't really have an answer there. Uh, in this case, they all appear to be somewhat useful.